All right. So encapsulation, as most of you would already know, is a very crucial engineering construct that essentially keeps elements in your code consistent. It's the mechanism to conceal details of an object's internal capabilities. You hide these implementation details to mitigate clashes between components, which in turn keeps things in order. Object-oriented programming extensively relies on encapsulation for its classes. The DOM2 has an implementation to encapsulate certain components from the rest of the tree known as the shadow DOM. Before actually diving in, let's briefly look at what a regular DOM is. The DOM is a representation of a web document. A web document holds the structure and the content for the page. You can think of HTML as the web document here. The DOM represents this document as an object. So it's basically an object oriented representation of a web page, which makes it easier for programming languages like JavaScript to interact with it. Now Shadow DOM enables hidden DOM trees to be attached to elements inside the regular DOM tree. So these Shadow DOM elements might behave almost exactly the same as regular DOM elements, but you have the option to abstract a lot of elements from the outside world. Now to understand the Shadow DOM, you'll need to be aware of a few terminologies. The first one, which is the shadow host, is the regular DOM node to which the shadow DOM is going to be attached to. The second one is the shadow tree, which is the DOM tree inside the shadow DOM. Then we have the shadow boundary, which is the place where the shadow DOM ends and the regular DOM begins. And finally, we have the shadow root, which is the root node of the shadow tree. Shadow DOM nodes as I mentioned earlier, behave almost exactly the same as regular DOM nodes. The only key difference is that the code inside these shadow DOM nodes will have no effect outside them, which helps in keeping things consistent. For example, the video tag in HTML. In the HTML document, we only provide the video tag with the controls attribute. In the browser though, you won't find the reference to these control buttons. It's all abstracted under a shadow DOM. You can see here, the only thing that we get is the video tag. There is no reference to the shadow DOM that is present inside this video tag. If you really want to see the internals of this tag, you can open up the settings option here. And if you go down, there will be an element section wherein you'll find this option to show the user agent shadow DOM. You select this and if you go back, now you'll be able to see the internals of this video tag. Inside the shadow root, you'll find all the abstracted elements that are part of this video tag. Let's now actually create our own shadow DOM element. We'll be making a custom voting component, which is a simple thumbs up icon that updates the number of votes anytime you click on it. So to do this, let's go to the script file first. And I'll just add this code inside the file. Do not get overwhelmed by this. We'll take it one line at a time. So this custom voting component that we have is a class component and it extends the HTML element interface. Inside the constructor for this class, we'll first call the super method as we usually do. Now to create a shadow DOM, we'll first need a shadow root. So we create the shadow root instance using the attach shadow method. This attach shadow method takes in an options object as a parameter. This options object will only have one option, which is this mode and the value that we can set for this mode is either open or closed. If you set it to open, this shadow root instance will be accessible via JavaScript. But if you set it to closed, you won't be able to access it programmatically. For now, let's keep it to open. Eventually, we'll see what happens when we set it to closed. Then we have this class property called votes, which is the count that we are going to display right next to the voting button. We initialize it to zero. Then we create a wrapper element, which is basically a div tag. It's going to act as a container for the voting button and the voting count component. We also attach a class to this wrapper and we create the voting button. This is going to be a button component. We attach an ID to this button and we also add an event listener to this button because on clicking this button, we'll need to update the number of votes. So we attach an event listener to this button. Then we attach the voting icon to this button. We have a voting file already in our project folder. So yeah, we attach it to the voting button. Then we create the vote count component. It's a typical span tag. We give it an ID of vote count and we set the inner text of the span tag to the votes property that we had created before. 
then we also need to attach a style sheet to the shadow dom the reason we do this is because shadow dom will have its own style sheets the style rules from the outer dom will not get applied to the shadow dom so we'll have to create a separate style sheet and at the end we append the style sheet to the shadow root we append the wrapper to the shadow root and the vote button and the vote count will be appended to the wrapper after that we also need a vote method which is going to increment the number of votes so yeah we also attach a vote method to this class finally to define this custom component we'll make use of this custom elements registry and we'll pass in the name of our component along with the reference to the class so now you can use this custom element as any other regular element in your html document so let me just add some boilerplate and i'll just attach the voting component i'll also need to import the script so script i also have some default set of styles for our voting component nothing extraordinary you can simply copy it from the github repository that i have linked in the description now if i run this i get this component if i click on the thumbs up icon you'll see that the number of votes increase as expected now let me just open up the dev tools and if i select this component yeah you'll find the custom component the voting component that we have created and you'll also see the shadow root inside our voting component this is what we had created using the attach shadow method you'll also see open right next to this shadow root this is exactly what we had passed inside the options object of the attach shadow method so now let me just replace this with closed instead of open now if i try to click on the thumbs up icon you will see that i get multiple errors so this error basically means you cannot access the shadow root instance via javascript when the mode is set to closed you will get null as the value for the shadow root instance this is exactly the case with built in elements that contain shadow doms like the video tag that we just saw all right so that's pretty much it for this video these elements are invisible to selectors like query selector which makes it slightly better because it cannot be accessed and messed around with programmatically via javascript but at the end of the day just like any other javascript component you'll always find a way on the internet to bypass this as well but yeah if you are planning to work with web components in the future you'll definitely want to consider shadow dom because it's an integral part of web components apart from that if you have any doubts or suggestions you can put them in the comments and yeah i'll see you in the next one mm -hmm.